good evening and a very warm welcome to you. If you've just joined us here on CFM Stereo, my station, your station, you're listening to Game Changers. I'll be your host for the evening. My name is Farai Gwaze. Tonight on Game Changers, I'll be speaking to a very young, well, not very young, a young, innovative, <laughs> a young, innovative gentleman. He is the founder and uh, uh, chief executive officer for Road Rules, a visionary and multi award winning technology entrepreneur with a passion for solving Africa's pertinent problems through innovative technologies. Tawanda is a 2014 U.S. Department of State professional fellow and an and Ampian Venture Business Southern Africa winner and fellow as Zimbabwe's top young ICT innovator of the year 2011, Zimbabwe's top ICT innovator of the year 2013, first runner-up 2015, U.S. Department of State professional fellow alumni impact award winner 2015, uh, Zimbabwe Young Achievers Technology Awards. I am not done. Nominee and 2015 Zimbabwe Innovation Baraza finalist. He recently won third place in the Total Africa Startup Challenge on uh, on the twi- on the year 2016 Zimbabwe Awards. He's an expert in the identification and evaluation and implementation of innovative technologies in Zimbabwe. Tawanda received entrepreneurial training at the University of North Carolina in Charlotte, USA, and holds a graduate diploma in business management from the University of Zimbabwe, a certificate in security intelligence, and a diploma in security management. My guest in studio tonight is Mr. Tawanda Chikosi. Welcome to ZFM. Thank you, Farai. It's a pleasure to be here. I don't think I've ever ha- read uh, uh, an intro bio so long before. I think the last time I did that, I was reading Bio Yago Matanga. Oh, Mr. George. Yes, Mr. George uh, Matanga. Uh, okay. Before I get into our interview and our discussion today, you, you actually said very interesting. You said that if Facebook was a country, it would be the third largest in the world. That is mind-blowing. Yeah, you see, that's that's the reality we have today. And I wish so many people, especially the older generation, could understand that. You see now, um, you, you cannot afford to ignore people like Mark Zuckerberg now. Even the president of the United States had to go and meet with them. And we are now meeting with uh, people like Mark Zuckerberg, who just started a technology uh, platform uh, for young people. And, you know, it started as something that they wanted to do at school and college. And then they started opening it up and is now being regarded probably at presidential level because the kind of influence that he now has is equal to a president who, who is, you know, of a country that is the third largest in terms of population in the whole world. Mm-hmm. And the interesting thing I like about that is that um, he, he basically has his country, it's called Facebook. <laughs> uh, we are we are we are we are all citizens of, of, of this country regardless have, of gender regardless race of gender, or religion, race or religion <laughs> uh, 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 we've got our our access uh, numbers that those being our identity numbers you know yes and, uh, and of course there are no visas on facebook <laughs> <laughs> we can travel around and feel but we need to feel and move on but um looking at young innovators i think um one would argue that you're also making steps towards being such an innovator especially in zimbabwe and i think what I'd like to appreciate is that yes there's a macro approach towards looking at um, young innovators but we also seem to not be able to acknowledge and recognize enough of the ones that are here in Zimbabwe um, before we get on to uh, um, some of the work that you've done through your ICT based endeavors tell us a bit about your your early uh, 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 experiences where you grew up what you experienced as a, as, as a young man and um, when exactly you transitioned of course into becoming uh, the Tawana Jukosi that we know today Okay, but very interesting uh, for I to go down memory lane and try and see uh, what it is exactly that influenced and shaped uh, me to be the kind of person I am today. I grew up um, born and bred in Highfield, uh, that is in Harare. Um, I went to preschool there. And when I went to preschool, I think I was also uh, one of those people who are extroverts, people who are outgoing, people mm. who like to communicate with people, exchange ideas. I'm told, you know, by my parents that I, I was a Joseph in a Joseph and Mary drama. That was, <laughs> that was quite legendary. No, I, I make reference to this because uh, it is said that I performed so well to the point that the entire community said we had never seen anything like this right. from a preschool student. So when I look back now, when I start mm. to see mm. the way we have progressed in the career, we start to realize that you know development of children right at the stage from you know where they are still that young is very important. Right. It is what a bearing on on the future and who they become actually in, in, in future in life. Mm. So that was where I I did my preschool. That was um, Highfield uh, Community. Uh, preschool. Mm-hmm. Then I went to Tsungai Primary School, which is just the same school. I mean, in the same area in Highfield. 
Then after my grade 7, I went to Highfield High School for my secondary school. From 1 to 4, then I then left for Mtoko High School for my advanced level. Mm -hmm. So basically this is, you know, I, I, I still live in Highfield. That is where I grew up. And one thing that I can tell you growing in Highfield as a young person within the 90s, it, it was very competitive. Mm -hmm. it, was, it was very tough. You know, it, this is uh, a place where the weak uh, get victimized. This is a place where the strong uh, thrive. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, it's quite a very competitive you know, environment to grow up in. It's, it's a bit rough. So you have to have a certain level of resilience, a certain level of aggression as well, a certain level of uh, persistence. So I think this is um, what shaped me into be someone who's very relentless, someone who's very aggressive uh, towards anything that I set my mind on. I think the environment of being there uh, shaped me. But at the same time, there's a flip side to it. It, it is um, an environment where I lost a lot of my friends to drugs, a lot right. of my friends to you know, criminal enterprise, mm -hmm. a lot of my friends to HIV and AIDS. So I think it's, it's also a tough environment to navigate, you know, growing up in a ghetto or what people would call the project. Um, it's a very, you need strong family support and base where people actually instill discipline. Uh, we felt maybe our parents at that time were very tough, you know, because they always kept a close eye on us. But I think it was also helped them, you know, helped us and shaped us and kept us, you know, to be away from a lot of these new influences that are being brought about on the young people by the environment in which they grow up, particularly in the ghettos mm -hmm. or in the high density suburbs where we grow up. In. Right, right. And you know, it's, it's interesting as I'm listening to your story, I'm getting so engrossed. I'm actually just <laughs> <laughs> uh, 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 also making sense of appreciation. Uh, um, the person behind um, the journey mm -hmm. and obviously you've, you've gone through your trials and your tribulations of course. but um, what kind of a person were you at school like, like what were you like at school uh, it depends maybe let's say um, primary school I was a very competitive person mm -hmm. um, I was somebody who you might turn number one all the time <laughs> okay. uh, I think I, my, okay, I okay. met my match okay let me put like, let me put like, okay, let me put like this here were you the kind of person whereby if you didn't come number one yeah. try to go deep yeah of course of course I've always been a very competitive person by, by design mm -hmm. I think but uh, in primary school, up until maybe I got to grade seven, I was the number four, number five guy. I was right. number four, number five, and it was always very difficult for me, you know, because I always wanted to have that feeling of coming first. And then in grade seven, I came second, mm -hmm. you know? and I still remember it very well, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah, so. Then when I crossed over to Form One and Two, that's when I was now coming first in my class, mm -hmm. you know, and I was only, yeah of the game now right yeah you said i'm not wasting any time here we're making sure we be delivered before but mind you you see what changed this whole thing is that's when i started appreciating the impact of hard work right you know when when we were in school in high school we had uh, this at highfield high school where we would have two sessions so you would come in at 7.20 and school would break out at 12.20 mm -hmm. and the other session would come in at 12.20 and school would break at 5.20. So you know what I used to do? I would come in at 7.20, do the normal class sessions and stuff when everybody else is going home so that they can come tomorrow at 7.20 for the morning session, I would still remain behind. Then I would study with the A-levels at that time. Right. Up until 5.20, the sixth session closes. Then I go home. Right. So because of that kind of discipline and dedication to my work, um, I started seeing a difference. That's why I started coming first in my class. So I can now appreciate you know, the power of putting hard work. Where it says hard work sometimes trumps talent. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If you put in the work, no matter how talented you are, if somebody's putting in the work, they'll somehow start getting an edge over you. That's definitely, I definitely also would agree with that philosophy. And um, also looking at how the assumption that practice can make perfect, um, there's a very interesting um, intro that DJ Munya uses at the beginning of his show. Yeah. says, practice makes it permanent. <laughs> <laughs> that's and, DJ Munya for you. <laughs> that's definitely DJ Munya for you. And so, so obviously looking at your, 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 um, your upbringing, growing up in, in high fields and uh, um, your education, of course moving forward from there but then you also um, uh, went through your tertiary education um, outside of Zimbabwe then you eventually came back tell us a bit about that journey before we speak about um, uh, your entrepreneurial endeavors uh, not necessarily so uh, my tertiary education started here in Zimbabwe, oh, in Zimbabwe yeah. Yeah. so yeah. I started um, 
and this is where it becomes interesting for me you know i i was being primed because of my level of aptitude mm-hmm. for science as subject mathematics science physics chemistry biology so when i was being primed you know it's there's somehow a family history that a lot of people intellectuals in my family in the courses they become medical doctors mm. either they become veterinary doctors they become surgeons or they become dentists mm-hmm. so because of my natural aptitude for mathematics science uh, you know i was now being primed to be a medical doctor to the point that even my nickname at high school was doctor, was doctor because yeah. everyone was so sure i wanted to be or i needed to be a doctor yeah. because of my aptitude mm-hmm. but now that's where the difference was my interest and my aptitude there was a big difference mm-hmm. i had interest in business but i had aptitude in in mathematics and i never gave or i was never allowed the opportunity to give my interest a chance by taking in subjects like your math, your accounts your commerce or your business studies i was just being pushed towards you know that's very interesting you bring that up because yeah. um a lot of the times especially with young people in zimbabwe um when they finish their um their a level and they want to make that transition of course towards university tertiary education um the aptitude is what the direction is always exactly, taking us exactly. and, and 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 we seem to find situations whereby mana no pedza chikoro o wana degree ya chee but then now because they've got that degree they are not interested in this profession exactly. or this or, or, or this level or this this level of inclination they put themselves in but they've dedicated so much time yes. you know so much time i actually feel that i could have been much a much better success than i am mm. today by any standard you know if i had chosen you know or if i had been advised to pursue my interest Mm-hmm. instead of my aptitude mm-hmm. because after my a levels that's when i changed from being a sciences person to a business uh, person that's when i went and did a, a qualification in business management from the university of zimbabwe mm-hmm. so i went there and spent three years uh, doing a business management a program where i was now learning economics a business finance accounting business law mm-hmm. and all these other modules that come in that prime you for business decision making and this is where i actually felt that i'm now in my element I'm now at home and but I've finished so yeah. many so much time you know being primed for a science student and the awakening moment was I spent some time in hospital I'd never been admitted in hospital mm. but was when I was in A level I, I came down with some form of an infection and I was admitted on hospital when I that's when I realized you know what this hospital environment is not for me I see open wounds there and my blood would just run cold. Mm. I would have goosebumps when I see, you know, injuries of other people within hospital and I say, you know what? And I'm practicing to become this, someone yeah. who spent his whole life here. Right. I can't. Mm. That's when I made a decision, you know, late in my A levels to say, you know what? I'm, after I'm done with these academics, I'm going to switch. I'm going to do business. So how do your family how do your family take that decision? I think because of um, that's one thing that I can actually put out there to young people uh, if you are disciplined if you are hard working and your family sees it uh, they will respect the decisions you make and they will support you but if you're somebody who's not disciplined somebody who's always been having to be followed after making decisions somebody who, who you know problematic to parents even when you make the right decision people always then get to challenge it or they are slow to support you in your decision but I was always known to be somebody who's solid somebody who's disciplined somebody who's you know dedicated in whatever they want to do mm-hmm. so this transition was not that difficult for them right. to understand that you know what this is where he wants to go so let's support him knowing that he's a disciplined young man who always then you know put everything that he has got into what he's decided to do now Okay, right. And then extending from there of course, um you also spent some time in Michigan. Yeah, uh, it was North Carolina. So North Carolina, yeah. North Carolina, yeah. So after um, uh the United States uh embassy here in Zimbabwe ran a program between Zimbabwe and Zambia mm-hmm. uh, which was called Professional Fellows or it was called the Business Entrepreneurship Exchange Program. Mm-hmm. So um they called out for applications. I think there were about over 160 something people who applied uh, between Zimbabwe and Zambia. Uh, and they wanted 12 six from Zimbabwe and six from Zambia mm. and I was fortunate enough to be one of those six that were selected right yeah so when we were being primed for that they were going to expose us to environments or to organizations depending on our aptitudes and our interest and my interest particularly was how do american companies because they seem to dominate the world 
how do American companies take an idea from just an idea right up until it's been implemented, it becomes a company, what is the process that they go through. So that was my interest uh, to the American organizations that were running us to say, okay, so I was placed in an organization which takes people from having an idea right until it has been commercialized as a business. That is where I was being trained to say, okay, this is how we do it here in the States. If you walk in here and you say you've got an idea, this is what we take you through and this is what goes around until it then becomes a company. Right. Yeah. Okay. And then obviously also going through that experience, you must have then felt with you, um, how can I apply this and make it make sense where I come from back home? That was the whole point, man. Yeah. That was the whole idea of actually getting onto the program mm-hmm. and choosing that particular type of orientation or track. And man, it's been working. Mm. I think you you have read the awards that we, we, I, we, we, have, we have won. <laughs> <laughs> it's the kind of training and exposure um, um, that we got there. So uh, even when I came back home, not only did I want to keep it to myself, um, I was fortunate enough to have been called by Honorable Patrick Joao mm. when um, to be part of a committee, a national steering committee for the Zimbabwe uh, Youth Empowerment Strategy for Investment uh, Strategy document that was being uh, crafted. And these are some of the things that we made sure uh, we contributed and we put across to the min- Honorable Minister to say these are the platforms we need to create for young Zimbabweans to thrive. Mm. These are some of the things that we experienced when we were in the States. So if as a country we create a strategy around us to invest in the young people because we've got a youth demographic power. Right. You know, if we could create these platforms and have these running into the country then you could also then create a young innovator who's resilient, who's innovative and who's creative. So mm-hmm. these are some of the things that we have been you know contributing at a national level and this was presented to the president in the 24th session of the opening of the junior parliament Mm -hmm. so we're proud to have come in and you know imparted that and you know started doing some impact into the nation uh, having had that experience i also run in a a foundation called the chikosi foundation yes chikosi foundation yes yes exactly so what i then did is you know what i went back to my former high school said, okay, these young people in the high density suburbs, they don't really get the opportunity uh, that I asked for or get, you know, that I also got. So let me go back to them, you know, and give back to them. So I went to my former high school and say, okay, guys, this is where I am. I am a former student. And this is what I've managed mm. to achieve. If you give me a couple of young people, I'll be able to mentor them and to help them also in right. becoming right. young innovators right. into their future. Mm. So I was fortunate enough that year to be given 11 young people people eight guys and three three young ladies and it, it so happens for I that um Highfield High School was taking part in what is called Junior Achievers Zimbabwe. It's a Jazz, business, yes, yeah, yes. It's a business club's mm. competition and Highfield High had been competing in this for 10 years mm. and they had never won it. So when I took in these boys and started right. mentoring them and started working with them in the same way because based some on of that, some of that Chikosi magic there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They won it for the first time in 10 years, right? right? So that's one source of pride. On on that particular note, I mean, like, um, I I, I think one could certainly admire um, um, such a step as a young person who says, you know what, I'm ready to start giving back because a lot of, um, dare I say, our peers um, feel that they will start being able to give those, they'll start giving back to their communities when they arrive. Mm. When they finally get there now, mm. then yeah. they will start, yeah. uh, no, I'll, I'll help out here and there. But you decided, let me start early. Exactly. Right? The moment that you uh, 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 became exposed, you realized, listen, I'm going to go back and I'm going to give. But then tell us a bit about how your interaction was uh, with the school and your community when you were also trying to impart what you had learned to get to the point where they could actually attain coming first place for the Junior Achievement Award. Yeah, so I also was uh, admittedly uh, sore of the same mindset that when we have actually made it, that's when we can come back and start making an impact. But when I was in the States, when I started seeing how other people were mentoring other young people, you know, at the University of North Carolina, they brought in some 14-year-old kids, you know, these kids were being mentored on how to talk to investors, how to create computer programs, how to start a business, how to run a business, 14 year old kids. And I'm saying, okay, the guys who are mentoring these kids are people who are just slightly older who have just started you know, their own business as well, but they really haven't made it according to their society's norms. So I said, okay, so if these guys are mentoring these guys and 
this 14 year old this is now a global economy yeah. this is yeah. now a global country so yeah. a 14 year old from Zimbabwe and a 14 year old from these guys there's a huge difference we yeah. need to start speaking to our young people now at an early stage so that changed my mindset when I came back so when I started talking to this um, the patron of the school mm-hmm. understood it right. and saw value right. you know because I would spend most of my time with these kids on Saturdays on weekends okay this is how you create a presentation if you are talking to investors this is the kind of presentation that you make mm-hmm. this is this is what investors look into if you are talking to a different if you're talking to markets this is what you, you do it this is the emphasis and these young people were so eager to learn you know they could inspire you I'll drive them around introduce them to strategic partners they would handle the discussions themselves mm-hmm. then I'll just moderate i'll tell them this is how you structure a board meeting they'll go in there so i was just you know trying okay bring in graphic designers right my workplace and say okay guys if you want to create a presentation that is captivating and captures the attention of the people you need to have expertise and this is a graphic designer tell him what you want to come out and they will do it creatively and so they started appreciating teamwork they started appreciating the expertise of others and not being the ones that they have to rely on themselves so this has been a very um interesting journey for us and I've continuously you know had a second lot mm. of young people who are mentoring again from from the same school and we are working closely with Jazz now the Shikose Foundation is a mentor and you know just guiding these young people to become uh, you know have them entrepreneurial mindset right, yeah. from an early mm, stage yeah. mm, mm. and I think also it's very important to note that uh, um, those endeavors clearly have permeated well with the youth because we are seeing a lot more platforms whereby young people are now engaging areas around uh, uh, um, entrepreneurial endeavors, especially since uh, um, the school system. I mean, uh, I, I'm not trying to knock education <laughs> at all, but um, there are certain people who, when they go to school, those who are A students, right, um, find themselves becoming easier to become to qualify to become employed, mm. right? And the people who are C and D students, those are the ones who are more inclined to getting into enterprise, mm. right, and being able to actually uh, start businesses as opposed to be able to become employed in businesses. So I think it's also very important that mm. to figure out at a young age Age, you know age. where are your strengths you find that you're trying to push someone to becoming a doctor yet yeah. they're going to become an entrepreneur <laughs> <laughs> all right um uh, before we also take a small break and and, and cross over uh, uh, um, to the next segment of our show Unfortunately, I should have mentioned at the beginning, this is a pre-recorded show. It's not a live show. So unfortunately, all your WhatsApp questions and contributions, we won't be able to engage them right now. But you do have various social media platforms that we can engage and communicate as a good throughout the show. Yeah, definitely. Uh, anyone who wants to reach out there, we are very active on social media and we are very responsive as well. Uh, we try as much as we can to respond to each message within the hour. So our WhatsApp number is 0773 Double six eight. Our WhatsApp number again is 0773 And um, my Twitter handle is at Chikosi Tawanda. Twitter handle at Chikosi Tawanda. Uh, our Facebook platform as well is at Chikosi Tawanda. Then if you want to contact us via our uh, corporate um, uh, handles, it's at Road Rules ZW. At Road Rules ZW. And we also have a very active. Uh, page on social media on Facebook which is Road Rules app so reach out to us and we'll be able to respond to you within the hour Alright, the listen to ZFM Stereo, my station your station, please stay tuned ZFM Stereo, we play hits like this And this Ooh, you be living with me even this. I saw I saw I saw Nigga no. Your station for all things hot. ZFM stereo. We play hits like this. And this. Even this. I need a one dance. Got a Hennessy in my hand. One more time for I go. Higher power. Your station for all things hot. 
good evening once again and a very warm welcome to you just join us here on the cfm stereo my station your station you're listening to game changers i'll be yours for the evening my name is farai guaze this book earlier on my my guest in studio tonight is the ceo and founder of road rules mr tawanda jikosi I also like to add once again that he's a multi-award winning young entrepreneur, <laughs> social entrepreneur, innovator, <laughs> inspirer, amongst many, many other things. But you also like good music. You are far too kind. <laughs> far, you're far too kind. <laughs> so tell me what do you listen to when you decide to just, uh, when you're in your space, when you're just like, listen, this is what I'm, 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 I'm in my zone, I'm in my element, and you just chill. What music do you listen to? It depends, Farai. Um, I listen to almost anything and everything gospel. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I, I'm a Christian, mm-hmm. uh, a serious Christian, not a church goer, but a Christian. Uh-huh. There's a difference between I, a church goer and a Christian. I relate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I, I love listening to gospel music because at the end of the day, I do realize that whatever it is that a human being achieves, mm-hmm. it's only by the grace of God. That's it. We can only do so much with our own hard work, but the one who opens opportunities and who opens doors for you, that's the man above and that's the Lord Jesus Christ. So I, I listen to a lot of gospel music, uh, but I also have friends. I have got sisters, I've got, you know, family. They love house music uh, and you, you get to also, you know, listen to it and say, okay, what are they listening to and what, what is being said? Mm-hmm. You also have got people who like hip hop, who like mellow music. You also then get to, you know, listen to that and also see what it, when people are listening to this, what's, what's really, you know, going about them. Because it's not really about the music itself, but it's the message that the people that are usually seeking for so it's something that just makes you understand what goes on around your world and what right. you relate to right, people. Right, because you right, don't live right, in a vacuum. Yeah, yeah, you don't, yeah, you yeah, don't live yeah, in a vacuum. Yeah. And as much as you may be a Christian, you work with people with mm. different interests. You lead a team of different people. Different beliefs. You see. So yeah. you also have to be someone who also be able to relate with people if you are to go anywhere in the world. Yeah, yeah, no, definitely. And also I'm sure to uh, maybe some of our listeners right now may be wondering, to go to one background. <laughs> I'll let you introduce uh, uh, our, our our additional guest uh, who has joined us here tonight. All right, so um, with me in studio today is Rudo Mandapa. She's a member of the Road Rules team. Uh, she joined us about three months now. Um, so this is in line with uh, my belief for mentorship, my belief for teamwork. It's easy for people now, for I, you know, like for people like you, when you're reading the bios and the profiles and you see all these awards that we've won, to think that it's all about me. Mm-hmm. But in actual fact, it's not about me, it's about the team. I, I'm here today sitting as a representative of a team of other people. So in this case, we have Rudo who's just joined us. So we're mentoring her and we're working with her uh, in terms of building the structure and the systems for road rules as we are growing and scaling because the company is growing now. It's scaling, it's recruiting more people. So she is here with me as part of a mentorship program because she has to be able at some point to run this company in our absence and to be able to have these conversations on radio, uh, conversations everywhere. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it's also very important that you, you notice that aspect because you appreciate the growth that you're going to go through but i'm going to put you on the spot for a second again yeah. <laughs> yeah, because we need to know whether there's a dream seller or not <laughs> <laughs> right so tell me what your experience has been so far with working with mr chikosi but more importantly also with the vision behind road rules okay um i joined road rules uh this year in august and working with Tawanda, it is a good thing Tawanda is a focused person mm-hmm. What he wants is what he wants. When he says do something like this, you don't help her with something. Mm-hmm. What happened? Uh, tell me how I told you to do things at mm-hmm. the minute end of such a reason. Mm-hmm. So Tawanda is someone who's really focused and working with them and learning a lot of things uh, in the whole sector. I do think that Tawanda is in the center and everything. Mm-hmm, right. No, uh, I'm looking at especially everything entrepreneurship. I remember a while ago, actually, I might just throw this in there. I remember the first time I actually met you was uh, uh, during one of the entrepreneurial forum discussions that we're having here at ZFM, right? And you had just launched uh, um, the Road Rules app, right? And we're looking at how ICT, how, looking at ICT systems, and more importantly, how they can be innovated to be contextualized towards the Zimbabwean setting. Um, you know how in races, when they say that um, you, oh, people always remember who comes number one, and they barely remember who comes second. Exactly. 
exactly. Right? Exactly. It's, it's, it's very difficult for me right now to remember who the other guest was at that ah, point in time. Right? But, but, here's what I will say though. I clearly know. Here it comes. <laughs> <laughs> who number one was. Yeah. We clearly know who came out. Now, a lot, a lot, a lot of presence has been had on print media mm-hmm. looking at the Road Rules app uh, from that time. This is o- over a year ago. And um, you've obviously skyrocketed in terms of actually creating a presence and awareness of uh, um, the actual service that the business offers. But more notably, we also saw your presence on a, a, a program. Yeah. Right. Uh, Simba Savannah. Yes. Right. Yes. And um, which comprises of um, uh, potential investors, mm-hmm. right, who would be interested in, the, in, in, in that particular uh, product or service that you'd be offering. And um, we would like to know a bit more about what happened because when we're watching on TV, we're thinking, but you're right, Sakapu Amari, just on fire, just waiting. So, you know, let us know how did that, but what happened? How did it go down? No, it, it, it actually went very well. Uh, we were very clear and very methodical in what we wanted mm-hmm. and what we wanted actually had a lot of blowback uh, from the uh, from the market or mm-hmm. what we call from from the citizens mm-hmm. I, I would hate to say it from the public but from the citizenry they felt um, I had a good product I had a good company and I gave away too much because mm-hmm. I gave away 45 percent of yeah. the company uh, I thought the same thing too I was like <laughs> what 45 <laughs> but yeah uh-huh. you know it's, it's funny when I when we were Beating at the agricultural show, some lady came to me and says, Cause I would take a company, yes, and I'm an But clearly, you must have had a strategy. Tell us a bit about what your plan was. Yeah, so uh, you see, I think one of the misconceptions that as young entrepreneurs we have is money, 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 mm-hmm. funding, 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 funding. All we want is money. But I think money is a commodity. Mm-hmm. I think there's so much money in this country, mm-hmm. we, we don't even know what to do with it. Yeah. It's just that maybe we don't have uh, the quality and standards that draws that money. Mm-hmm. There are so many people for I who are saying, okay, I've got so much money, I don't know what to do with it. Where, where can I put my money so that it can, it can grow? Mm-hmm. But when we came onto the Simba Savannah shore, that was the realization that, you know what, if you've got a brilliant idea, if you've got a good idea, and the business dynamics are correct, all the business metrics are correct for an investor, mm-hmm. you will actually be selecting and picking them right. instead of you looking for them. Right. right. So we knew exactly what we wanted. We didn't want money at that time. Mm-hmm. You see, my pitch was clear. At this point in time, we are not looking for money. Mm-hmm. We want firepower. So when you get uh, someone like Nigel Shanakira, whom you cannot even afford to ignore when you speak about the entrepreneurial history of this country, uh, you get Florence Yumbe, you, these are you know trailblazers in their own right. You speak of Gary Thompson, uh, you speak of Ritesh Anand and Chamuchuanza. These are the people, that, the movers and the game changers and the shakers in this industry. So you get those people on your team, money will always follow. That's what right. people fail to right. understand. Right. 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 The money will always come. If I have got these five onto my team, they are looking at the business strategy, they are helping set systems in place, they are making sure all the legalities are in place, they are accompanying us to the meetings that we need mm. to go, they are opening the doors that we need to go. And when we come to a point where you say, okay, the business now needs a hundred thousand dollars. Do you really think all these five cannot put it on the table mm-hmm. when they have got the confidence and they've built that relationship right, with them? Right. So that is where people lost the play. Mm-hmm. Number one. Number two, these are busy people. These are multi-millionaires in their own right. Mm-hmm. You know, you give them 10%, my guy, let's be realistic. There's, re- there's TV and there's reality. Mm-hmm. On TV, you may look cool like you've retained a bigger chunk of your company. But are you going to call them and they come to attend to you? Are they going to respond to your messages when you send them because they are of 10% of your company? No, they're busy people. They've got their own money already. Mm-hmm. And that this is business. This is not a charity. That's it, yeah. So if I want Nigel Senagira to be responding to my message when I send it, he better has, you know, something that is meaningful for mm-hmm. him. So that is, you know, the kind of evaluation that we are going to make. The money will always come. The money will always come. Where a startup company, these guys understand it. They started banks. They started banks businesses before Gary Thompson started his own media agency on his own and right. started from scratch so right. he understands that at any point in time the startup will always want money but what is important as Florence Zimba would say is relationships let's build a relationship let's get to understand the vision where you guys are coming from 
where you want to take this company, but what would make us spend so much of our time with you trying to understand this is because they've got a substantial stake in this thing. Right. So that is why you see Florence who can invite us for tea on Sunday at her house. Come talk to us. Let's have four hours talking mm. and have tea. And because they've actually, yeah, they've actually because invested. Yeah, they've got exactly, a stake. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. You yeah. know, you speak to Nigel. Nigel's helping you in each and every corner. If you're having problems, he says, okay, let me step in. Let's go to that meeting together. They're spending their time there because they know if this thing becomes a pan-African vision that mm-hmm. it becomes it becomes a multi-million dollar but multi-million dollar business. Mm-hmm. So and and, and 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 I think that's the most important part because I mean like I I'm a fan of Dragon's Den. Yeah. Right. I'm a fan Duncan Valentine is my <laughs> is my I, I'm yeah. more of a Shark Tank guy. You're Dragon's more of a Shark Tank Den guy. It's more laid back for me. Exactly. You, know? you are you see now exactly <laughs> like, you know. I mean like those are the kind of, like as in so I, I'm very into those kind of programs yeah. where we're looking at pitching you know, and, and, and how you can sell it, and I also like seeing people fail, uh-huh. and, 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 and and how they can try and get it right. But at the same time, um, what I found to be more interesting about all these particular programs mm. is when you find someone who is prepared, exactly, who knows exactly what their business is about mm-hmm. and how to sell that business. Exactly. And I think well, you are one of the very few that actually managed to pull it off. Um, as 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 uh, Ruda, I'm sure you can reiterate or agree with this. <laughs> or not. Um, you, you seem to have. A, a large level of confidence that one would call borderline arrogance. <laughs> and Nitika, right? And she says yes. And yes. Nitika, yes. that I didn't know exactly. Yeah, yeah, it's true. Like, like it's borderline yeah, arrogance. Exactly. Yeah, she it, says yes. yes. Exactly, because it's borderline. It, there's so much confidence, it crosses slightly over towards arrogance. <laughs> Why are they so certain of themselves? But it's also because of a level of confidence. But where I'd like to take that from is where, where, where did you find or how did you manage to tell into having a large degree of Mm self-awareness but at the same time being able to instill an inclination towards self-esteem and yeah all right so that's a very interesting thing uh, and I don't know how many people will agree with me on this one but here is this uh, there are two fundamental things that I look at here the first thing is preparation Mm -hmm. you have to know your business you have to know not only your business but your industry you have to know what the industry will look like five ten years from now so i wouldn't care less if it's nigel chanakira sitting across the table i know more about this mm-hmm. i i can tell him where this thing is going five years from now mm-hmm. smartphones are getting cheaper you will end up getting everyone having a smartphone you, you know you read reports global reports you've got access to the internet you've got information so that kind of information you have done your background research you have been working on this thing and you have got almost every tiny little bit of information concerning your product what you don't really have maybe is experience mm-hmm. that he has or yes. that they have mm-hmm. but in terms of intimate knowledge regarding this particular thing i probably know more right right so i actually know that when i'm getting there on stage i'm probably if I'm not the expert, I'm close to being the expert in the subject matter. Right. So that gives me the confidence. Right, right, right. Because I think a lot of us maybe try and focus on the salesmanship side. Ah. Can I just sell it? Can I say all the right things to sound the right whatever it is there? But then now when you get into the nitty gritties of the operation exactly. of what you have sold, we start seeing cracks. Exactly. Mm-hmm. That's where the problem is. Um, you see, Farai, I think misconceptions to say when you start a business the business you become a multi-million dollar business maybe the next one year or you start a business today maybe by the end of 12 months you'll be driving a range rover and stuff like that no 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 business doesn't work that way you need a runway particularly when you're operating in zimbabwe you need a runway probably five years Mm-hmm. So you have to get in it knowing that you're in it for the long run. Mm-hmm. And because these guys have got the experience, they can smell you a mile away. Mm-hmm. Right? They can tell that this guy is shallow, is just trying to sell something to us, and yet it's not deep. Look at how Ritesh would then come down with you mm-hmm. with a calculator on the numbers and he would tear you down mm-hmm. like that, bro. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so mm-hmm. I think 
First and foremost, you have to understand that when you're starting a business, your business is going to be evaluated on its success maybe 50 to 100 years from now. Right. When you're no longer even there. Mm -hmm. So you're setting that right from the onset. In as much as you're starting the business in Zimbabwe, you know this is a pan-African business. I'm not only intending to implement this in Zimbabwe, but also across Africa and probably across Latin America or certain markets that are similar to where we are at. Right. So right from the onset, you're looking at the business dynamics and the business fundamentals from that perspective. Mm -hmm. So when you're arguing, you're looking at the Siemens report on what mobile smartphones will be like in Africa for the next five to ten years. And you're planning it from there, from that perspective. So when you're talking to Nigel, when you're telling them, no, 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 Nigel, this is what's going to happen. Smartphones are going to be like this, according to Siemens or according to this Nokia report. Up to 2025, this is what the environment would look like. Right. So if we make the decision now and start investing it in this direction, this is what probably it will look like six, seven years from now. Mm -hmm. Now when you speak like that, they see that there's depth. They see that research and work has been done. I always make a joke with my friend that if you watch season s Game of Thrones from season 1 to season 10 or season 7, mm -hmm. brah, you're spending a lot of time on something that doesn't help yep. you. Thank you. Okay, carry on. <laughs> 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 Let me not, because here Kuno Kukubasaka, we've got people who love Game of Thrones. So, so right now someone knows. <laughs> Thank you. Noted. <laughs> Carry on. No, 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 but you know what? You're a young person. Yeah. You've got a future that you need to plan for. You have to be reading. There's access to the internet. You have to be watching YouTube tutorials. Mm -hmm. You have to be searching for reports on things that are going to impact your life. What is the demographic like? You know, how... What is this the, the youth structure going to be like in Africa for the next 10 years? Which are the most populated countries with, uh, you know, vehicle population or with young people? You, you have to have a lot of information that you have to read and understand and to watch so that you can plan. So that when you speak to people with experience, they see that you have put in the work. Right. You are not sending someone. You see what, what, what we do with... I, I'm one of those people who decide to lead from the front. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. If I want people in my team to distribute flyers, I'm not going to send them where I have not been. I will go distribute flyers myself, see the challenges associated with yes. distributing flyers there. Mm -hmm. If I'm going to stand by that you know, corner for eight hours, I'm going to stand there. So when my team comes back to me and tells me, do you know what? I'll tell you, yes, I understand. I was there. there. <laughs> you get it? <laughs> yeah. Oh, no, you are, you are not playing your part because I stood there. So it's, it's some of those things that you, you need to be hard on and immersed. Mm -hmm. And because you're hard on and immersed, it's, when yeah. somebody challenges you on Dragon's Den on yeah. Facebook, you can stand your ground. Right. Yeah. And, and, and what I admire about the way you're putting it forward is we seem to have a lot of um, uh, uh, business card CEOs. Mm. Right? Mm. As in like, they, the, 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 the title of which, no, I'm CEO of this year is what they seem to so, enjoy more. Yeah. As opposed to having an in-depth understanding and appreciation of what is required of you exactly. as the CEO. Exactly. And I think you seem, to be, uh, you seem to be showing that clearly as an example through the work that you're doing. But let's also make sense right now of your business structure. How are you running your business structurally? That's an interesting one. That's an interesting one because uh, I think in terms of structure, it also then starts by maybe organizational culture. Mm. What is it that I am, you know, when you're building a company, what is it that you're looking forward to achieving maybe in the next 10 years and how, what is the structure in terms of the culture that you want people to have within the organization that is going to drive that thing forward? You know, when you, the company that I'm building is a company where it's not mine. It's our company. So if you come and start working with us, even if you are employee number 100, this is our thing. We start by telling you what the vision is, where we are coming from, where we see this thing going, where we want this thing to go. And you are coming in as a partner to help us achieve that, all of us. So when this company becomes a success 10, 15, 20 years from now, it's not me, but it's each and every one of us. It's us. Right. It's not me, it's us. It's the team. So you instill that kind of organizational culture where you teach people 
to to blossom to be the mm. best they can be. They, they they have to come up with ideas and tell you no this is what we are thinking have you thought about this and say no no that's a good idea i haven't thought about it the fact that i'm the founder and the ceo doesn't mean that i know everything that is why i hire or bring in and attract talent that is even much better than i am so that they can tell us what to do we tell them the vision this is what we see when you look at us what you also see we have a common vision that we then now push as a same single unit to go through so it's a very loose uh, type of structure. It's a very loose. It's not like the CEO is locked up in his own office. No, no. Very no. less affair. It is very less <laughs> affair. But don't yeah. get me wrong. Mm-hmm. Work gets done. Right. When it's time for work, it's time for work. When it's ten o'clock, it's ten o'clock. Mm-hmm. Right on the dot. Farah, right. you told me to come here at a certain time. I'll, do you know what? Don't even start that story. <laughs> I was actually about to, when Rudolph was talking earlier on, talking about how uh, 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 talking about yourself and how clear you are and focused. I was actually about to go, but. We had agreed for 12 o'clock. 12 o'clock on the dot, I look outside my window. Hey, walking into the station. I'm like, you see, this is what sets the difference apart between those who are focused in terms of what they know they're doing mm-hmm. and those who are trying to look like as if they know what they're doing. You have to leave the talk, man. Mm-hmm. If, if somebody says, come at 4, for hours, I tell you, yeah, 5 to 12, mm-hmm. you know, so that we can start at 12. Mm-hmm. It means I respect you mm-hmm. enough mm-hmm. because if you're going to come here at 12, it means there are so many other things that you have had to put aside mm-hmm. so that you can come here at 12. Mm-hmm. So if mm-hmm. I then show up at 10 after 12, it means I don't have respect enough for all these other things that mm. you've decided to set aside. Talk about respect before we take a small break. Uh, um, how have you found your engagement with uh, your peers? Mm. You know, when uh, you, a lot of the times people think that they know it all. Yeah, all right. And I'm sure even our listeners right now, some are <laughs> listening going, with, yeah, but we are tired of that. Uh, you know, and then I'm sure there are others also listening going, you know what, I'm learning so much from what he's saying, mm-hmm. right? Uh, and everyone has a right to their opinions. Mm-hmm. How have you found it engaging with uh, a peer's when it comes to sharing ideas, but at the same time, not necessarily sharing ideas for the specific business, but for how we can all collectively be able to grow and move forward. Okay, so I, I think um, it becomes tricky mm. you know, when you get a bit of publicity, uh, when you get a bit of traction, um, how you share your opinions to other people, mm. with other people. So what I've just resorted to doing is I'm somebody who speaks their mind Mm -hmm. and I I really don't care what you think. Mm -hmm. I I speak my mind, but I do it respectfully, but I speak my mind. Mm -hmm. I'm someone who says I'm spot on. Mm -hmm. I'm the kind of person who if I have a problem with you or if I have something that I think you should hear, I don't tell your friend or your other side and you know that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. I come straight to you and handle it straight. Mm -hmm. So I think that is, you know, one thing that I found very useful because it takes away all these other misconceptions conceptions because right. I can tell you dude I came straight to you and told you mm-hmm. what I thought mm-hmm. it's it's up to you to take it or to leave it mm-hmm. I may be wrong I may be right but I've just come straight to you I didn't tell the next person or the third person I came straight to you mm-hmm. so I share that but at the same time I'm also a humble guy mm-hmm. you know I have learned this from my pastor humility is the best thing that you can ever do so if you are humble and you tell people the truth and you tell it to them straight then your chances of having conflict with people are very, yeah, that's a minimum. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. We're speaking to Tawana Jikosi, CEO and co- CEO and founder of A Road Rules here on Game Changers. You listen to ZFM Stereo, my station, your station. Please stay tuned. ZFM Stereo, we play hits like this. Hello. Hello. And this. Even this. Your station for all things hot. ZFM Stereo. We play hits like this. And this. Even this. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Your station for all things hot. 
good evening once again everyone welcome to you just joined us here on the cfm stereo my station your station you're listening to game changers of yours for the evening my name is farai Gwaze, and in studio i'm joined by mr tawanda chikosi uh, uh, ceo and founder of road rules and um, we've been having a very interesting conversation so far getting to know the man behind the plan but more importantly the vision behind the dream why is it going <laughs> and um, every single time when one wants to make steps towards uh, um, ascension and success, there are always many trials and uh, there are also, of course, many tribulations. I think right now you've gotten to the point where you've reached the stage of of, of actualizing what your idea was. Because like I said, we spoke about this a long time ago yeah. on radio and it's now being actualized. But its application uh, uh, is something that I questioned before and I'll ask you the same question yeah. that I'm sure you're going to give me a very positive <laughs> answer to right now. How scalable is this particular entrepreneurial endeavor? It's pretty much very scalable. Um, in 2014, Zimbabwe alone, uh, we spent almost half a billion dollars importing cars mm. from B4, uh, Japan, SBT, and all these other mm. you know, service providers from Japan, where we import motor vehicles as a company, as a country, half a billion. So the traffic in the country will tell you that more and more people are driving cars because the world is rapidly motorizing and Africa is also rapidly motorizing. Zimbabwe is not spared mm-hmm. it's part of that. So every young person in this country, I believe, would like to own a car at some point or would like to drive. Mm-hmm. So in terms of scalability, it's, it's something that we feel every Zimbabwean would want to use the road rules application is they prepare to get their driver's license. Mm-hmm. Now, what is scary about this rapid motorization that is happening uh, in Zimbabwe and also in Africa is that road accidents. Mm-hmm. At some point in Zimbabwe, I think if it's not still the case, the road accidents are the second largest kill after HIV and AIDS. Mm-hmm. And you see the police now cracking down on unlicensed drivers. We had an outcry, a public outcry, which I could not understand. Mm-hmm. Where the police were suggesting to find 100 US dollars for an unlicensed driver. Mm-hmm. And people, you know, there was a blowback against that because there are so many of this now and people are losing lives. Let me understand the intricacy of that or the complexity of that decision. Was it an unlicensed driver or not having a license whilst you were particularly driving? Let's be fair. Uh-huh. Let's be fair, guys. Right. If you don't have a driver's license on you, the police will say, get someone to bring it. Right. Or let's go to the police station, you leave the car, you go get the driver's mm. license, you come and get your car. Right. Most cases, people who don't have it right. are the ones who want to cause an accident. I see. But the day you are going to be hit by a non-licensed driver or your relative or your wife or your husband, that's when you begin to appreciate this. Because it's no longer a third party, but mm-hmm. this is now affecting you. Mm-hmm. And a licensed driver has just maimed you mm-hmm. or maimed your wife or your mother or something. So I think... Because of that, we feel this is scalable. Every person would require a driver's license. Mm-hmm. And not only are we going to scale this application in the driver's license sector where they are sitting for the provisional driver's mm-hmm. license, we're also looking at the practical driver's test. Mm-hmm. We also have technologies there that we can bring in that can bring in change and fight corruption in that space mm-hmm. where it's no longer subjective to the you know, driving instructor to say you have passed or not. Mm-hmm. But there could be technology that can assist to make sure the system is automated for you know, people to I love get it. their driver's license. This, this is why we So this is how scalable yes. This is still to yes. answer your question as yes. to how scalable yes. this whole thing is. Yeah. Right now, if you walk into the VID, you get a multiple choice question paper mm-hmm. handed to you. Mm-hmm. Why? This is the 21st century, man. Right. Why not use the Road Rules mobile application to mm-hmm. automate the testing? Because mm-hmm. some people claim that the VID uh, testing officers, they fail you. Mm-hmm. But now the system will just test you. This is by 25 itself. questions, 8 minutes, you get a tablet. Which car goes first? You tick, tick, tick. They're on a tablet. The same way you do when you're sending WhatsApp messages. Yeah. 8 minutes later, it grades you. It's mm-hmm. automated. It's a system. Mm-hmm. This is how scalable it is. And the application itself, we are looking at Kenya. We are getting inquiries as far as Bangladesh, Pakistan, Qatar. People saying, why don't you bring in this application and deploy it here. Bangladesh is over 160 million people. Mm-hmm. We're looking at Nigeria, over 175 million people. Mm-hmm. Kenya, 44 million people. Uganda, over 42. Tanzania, 46 million people. So this is how scalable uh, this mobile application is, the Road Rules mobile application, to teach people uh, to study for their provisional driver's license. You look at the United Nations World Health Organization, 
they actually had to create within all the member states what is called a decade of action for road safety right. 2011 to 2020 mm -hmm. because they are saying if we don't intervene road accidents are killing more people than war right. war mm. this is war on the mm. african continent globally mm. more people are dying out of road accidents instead of war mm -hmm. so they had to intervene and say let's now have what we call a decade of action for road safety where all the un member states are taking stringent and purposeful measures to ensure that they curb road uh, road cannon so i think from a global scale this is how scalable this right. you know road rules technology right. thing right. is I mean, I think uh, that, that was very aptly answered. I think we can clearly say that um, the road rules uh, uh, um, phenomenon mm -hmm. is the kind that will definitely be able to spread throughout the continent and also be able to be uh, globally applicable. Uh, what, of course, is most interesting is how it has been innovatively applied here mm -hmm. in Africa. But uh, uh, more importantly, Zimbabwe, we look forward to seeing more work yeah. that you'll be doing through the actual uh, 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 road rules uh, facility. We are unfortunately out of time. Ah, sure. It is a wrap. I've, I've thoroughly enjoyed having you in studio. And Thank we look forward to more uh, information about your success. But if anyone wants to get a hold of you, they want to find out more information about uh, road rules, if they want to download the app, yeah, sure. How do they go about doing that? All right. So the application is available for free download on Google Play Store. Uh, you just uh, go to Google Play Store, type in road rules app, and you'll be able to get the application uh, free on your phone. Uh, you'll be able to use it to study for your provisional driver's license test. We have had numerous we have actually lost count of the number of people who have used the application and nailed the exam the first time we've got so many of them also on record that have said we have passed it 100 percent after having used the road rules application so the road rules application is zimbabwe's provisional driver's license test app then uh if you want to get all of us uh, we are available on social media we run very interesting quizzes for people teaching them how to drive and prepare for this exam on social media on facebook uh, our page is road rules app then on twitter as well our twitter handle Handle is at Road Rules ZW for Road Rules Zimbabwe. Then our WhatsApp number is 0773384668. Our WhatsApp number again is 0773384668. So thank you for I for having us on ZFM Stereo, your station, my station. <laughs> Ah, you know what? <laughs> that actually wasn't too bad at all. I think we, I think we need to get you a job here on day and you can present uh, one of the programs. Once again, I'd like to thank my guest studio of Jimmy tonight, Rudo. Thank you so much for also joining us. And of course, Mr. Tawana Chikosi, CEO and founder of The Road Rules. But more importantly, um, have an appreciation of um, the work that is being done by young innovators, but also at the same time, this tool, this tool that could save lives and that could actually make uh, our driving experience a lot less tardy than the one that we've been experiencing so far. I thank you once again for joining us in the studio and if you listen to ZFM Stereo, my station, your station, please stay tuned. ZFM Stereo, we play hits like this. And this. Even this. I saw. I saw. I saw. Nigga, no. Your station for all things hot.